Okay, so start programs, Globecaster. You're going to see um, in here utilities. You're going to see CS100. It's actually, and then you're going to see Macro Manager. And in this case, I'm going to click on this little down arrow next to this. And um, you've got a guide in here. I wanted to point that out. So I'm just going to click on the guide for a second, and I'm going to bring this window over so you can check it out. This is pretty comprehensive um, in terms of all the all the functionality, how to use it, all that good stuff. So definitely, you know, it's even worth printing out actually. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just launch right into it. So I'm going to go to Globecaster, uh, Macro Manager here. And it's going to bring up a somewhat familiar panel here. This, is actually, this was actually designed for the CS100 app, our switcher that we have, but is absolutely usable with the CS1000 or even without a control surface at all. Um, okay. So... You've got all these buttons in here, and um, the way to record things to them would be just to literally uh, select a button that you want to record a macro to. Um, and over on the right-hand side, you've got a you've got two different ways to record stuff. You can actually manually punch in what you want the button to do. Or you can hit this record macro, and it's just going to record anything that you do. So we're going to start with that. Uh, it's the simplest way to do this. So if we hit record macro, right now, if I were to punch around, you'll notice all of a sudden these buses look like a switcher interface again. You've got black. You've got all your input sources. Um, so, you know, what I want this first thing to do here is I want it to load uh, a lower third bug. Okay, so anytime I want to run my bug um, for my channel, I don't want to have to go searching in my effects folder for it. You know, I just want to hit a button on the switcher and have it run. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the folder where I have that effect, which is going to be my uh, effects um, sampler folder. And, uh, you know, it could be anything. It could be a lower third if you wanted it to be. But in this case, I just want it to be this rotating 3D ray gun down here, okay? So I'm just going to double click on the ray gun and it's going to say load uh, DSK. Um, now I could have specified which DSK I wanted it to load in if I have more than one by dragging and dropping the effect right onto the DSK button. But in this case, I think I've only got one DSK in my box right now. So, um, but it, what this means is it's going to load the DSK it's in a wait state, okay, which means that it's not going to do the next command that I type in or punch in until it's finished loading the effect. Like a lower third. And um, and so now I'm ready to do the next thing, which is once it's finished loading, I want it to go ahead and run the effect. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and hit the um, auto button which should fire the effect off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now because that's all I want that macro to do. All right, now let's go ahead and make another macro while we're in here, so we'll have a couple things. I'm going to go ahead and um, save. I'm a big fan of hitting this Save Now button down here after I do one. I'm just going to hit save. And then I'm going to go to the next button. And this one is going to, I don't know, let's have it run an effect. So I'll have it run this effect. I'm going to go ahead and hit record macro again. Um, and we're going to just double click on the effect. Loads it up for me. We're going to go ahead and hit auto. Stop recording. Save that one. 
Now, for the third one, we're going to do this manually. We're not going to do the record macro method. So number three here, I'm going to select that. And we're just going to add stuff into this list, this command list, manually. So what I'm going to do is click on this action type here. And let's see, what would I like to do here? Um, I don't know. I'm having a hard time figuring out what I want it to do. Um, let's just say we do a um, effect command. So I click on that, and you've got these uh, different options here. And this gets pretty deep. I mean, every one of these has different options. You can load all kinds of stuff. So that's where the manual really comes in handy to read that. Um, and then obviously if you have specific questions about it, um, you can always call us in tech support. Um, go from there. So we're just going to say something silly like effect command. I'm going to make, I'm just going to make this button here do a dissolve. Okay. So it's going to choose the mix and it's going to run the mix. So we're going to say, uh, actually, the first thing we'll have it do is have it do mode on. So that will select mix if it's not currently on. We're going to say uh, run trigger. Okay. We'll save that. Now, the three different macros that I've created here, number one is to load that lower third um, bug. Um, and number two is to uh, run that effect, this one right here. And number three is it's going to set my effect mode to dissolve or mix and then do a mix. So I've got three effects basically set up here. Now I could have, like let's go to number four and just do a record macro again. We can have that one actually uh, load up a time machine clip that I just recorded. So we'll have that uh, load up waving. Okay, and so there it is, and that'll just be queued up for me. So if you had a commercial or something that you knew you wanted to run, um, or you know some video that you wanted to run, you could just have these as you know macros to run them. So save now. Okay, now let's go take a look at these in the switcher. Um, what I'm going to do is in my ABN folder here. Uh, I'm going to drag and drop this PyCon out, this little macro PyCon. So we save that guy, and um, you know maybe we're going to rename that. We're going to call it um, Effects Macro with Waving Clip. I don't know. Some way to differentiate that or know what the macro file does. And um, I can leave this open if I want to, but I'm going to go ahead and bring the switcher back up. And um, hold on real quick, guys. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so now it's time to run these macros. All right, now with the CS1000, um, you can actually, the, up on the numeric keypad of the CS1000, the forward slash key, which is up by the numlock button, will put the CS1000 in macro mode. Okay? Um, The, uh, let's see, where's that at? ABN. To load that macro file that I just made, I'm going to basically double click on this guy right here. And when I do that, you're going to see a uh, 
a little note down here using micro uh, macro file Globecaster bins blah 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 okay now how do I how do I affect that in a switcher without a CS1000 I click on this aux row here and I choose macro row 1 okay so now I've got access to those macros that I create and if I just push the first button it loads up and runs my uh, spinning gun there okay I'm gonna go ahead and push the second button and it loads up and runs the effect that I called up the third button is gonna load up but not run the uh, time machine clip or wait is this the mix one that's the mix one every time I hit that now why is it running both at the same time like it's it has the gun going it, it runs the effect well in this case when it loads that gun it's actually loading it into DSK channel 2 and the, re and the right. reason it's doing that is I didn't assign it to any DSK in the macro so it's gonna adhere to whatever is selected down here these you can highlight these DSKs if you have more than one and that designates its default load path so you know if, if DSK 1 is highlighted and I go to load a DSK it's gonna go into DSK 1 okay you know, if I have DSK2 highlighted, it'll go into DSK2. And the reason I'm running both of these right now is I have that second layer of downstream key. Do you guys have more than one layer of DSK or no? Yeah. Okay. So that's why it's running both. All right. Now, macro 3 is going to kill the effect and do a dissolve to me talking down here because you can't do a mix and an effect at the same time alright now number four what number four does is it calls up that time machine clip and cues it but I did not set that to run the time machine clip I just wanted it to cue it up so there's the slow-mo clip Now, are you guys doing this from the CS1000? Yeah. Okay. Tell me this. While you're in macro mode, can you punch around on your program bus right now or no? Oh. No, it's disabled. Okay. Well, here's what you have to do about that. Um you know you can either toggle back and forth between macro mode which is no fun or while you're creating your macros um, click on these little um, asterisk keys over here and choose to you know emulate the preview bus emulate the program bus you know if you're doing keying e emulate the key bus you know key preview bus I mean, usually those are the main buses you're ever going to use, and then you can just leave the top one as your uh, macro row bus. You, know, you might not even use key preview, actually, um, or key for that matter. I mean, you can build macros so that these manage virtual sets. So you push one button and it loads and 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 shows the correct camera and the correct background, all that good stuff. So okay, we're following. So once you set those things, then you're gonna want to save your macro file out again. Um, since you guys do virtual sets, I'll go ahead and make a quick macro file that loads um, the background to source and um, cuts to the right camera and everything with the one button so 
So what we're going to do here is um, on number five, since I don't have one set yet, we are going to um, hit record macro again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the still that I want up. So let's just go into my stills directory and we'll go to just textures for now. And I'm going to load this, this guy up. And actually what I should do, I'm going to remove this. If you, if you want to remove one that you've just put on, you can click on it and it'll put a check mark next to it. And you can say remove selected. But um, I'm going to actually drag and drop this guy right onto, let's just say FS1. Okay. That's weird. Move that. Hmm. Sorry, guys. I'm running into an issue here. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Oh. Uh, why, why are ours numbered? mix I'm not sure why it's adding this ox mix in there um, hold on real quick guys yeah, no problem. Big. Huge. Oh, you dummy. You're supposed to hit what man Then you can record. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I'm going to have to get out of here in a minute. Uh, no problem. Cool. I'm not really sure why it's talking about ox mix. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I'm just in a soft map, port a macro, drag and drop. This part right here is confusing. Shouldn't say ox mix. Is this part of like um? This is basically part of the green screen tutorial, right? Um, 
Well, it's not really necessary. I was trying to, yeah, show you guys how you can build macros so that, you know, there's one button that you push and it automatically would, uh, you know, take your camera shot and the correct background. Okay. Now, is this used when we start learning about virtual sets? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we can. I guess you can think about it and uh, get back to it when we start our training session tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So, well, what do you guys think? I mean, was the speed okay? Was like, you know, were you able to follow along all right? Well, speed was a little slow. Okay. But I think that's because we learned a lot of this already. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's it's perfect where if we want to play it back to somebody who doesn't know, it'll be good. So speed was okay. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed. Yeah, this. and you know, don't don't um don't be shy about saying, "Dude, we know this. Let's move on." <laughs> I mean, I've I've okay. definitely okay. sat through some college courses before. Where it was like, uh, you know. So. Come on already. Right. <laughs> no, okay. I mean, uh, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. Let's put it that way. So, nah. Tomorrow should actually be a little over our heads. I mean, so we'll be uh, we won't be saying speed up. All right. Yeah. Well, um, I'll go ahead and send you guys links to the uh, recordings that we've just done.